Hey, what's going on? Steven here. I've had the Segway Go-Kart Pro 2 for half a year now, and I've had a tremendous yet surprising blast driving this thing around. Yes, I have other vehicles that can get much higher in speed, but the secret for the Go-Kart Pro 2 lies with its ability to dish out some insane breakneck lateral Gs as it drifts effortlessly at your command. In this in-depth review, I'll share my unfiltered thoughts, highlighting the aspects I adored and the few I found wanting. Rest assured, this review is completely independent and unbiased. I purchased the Go-Kart Pro 2 with my own hard-earned cash, and Segway had absolutely no influence in the creation of this video. So without further ado, let's take a deep dive with the Segway Go-Kart Pro 2. Prepare to be amazed as we explore its capabilities, uncover its secrets, and ultimately determine if this extraordinary machine is worthy of a spot in your garage. The Go-Kart Pro 2 is a total game changer. You can hook it up to your PC and it becomes this awesome life-size racing simulator rig. It can even give you feedback like a rumble and it can automatically center the steering wheel and change gears in-game with shifter paddles. If you already have a Go-Kart Pro 1, you can just buy one of these controllers and turn it into a gaming rig too. But heads up, this gaming mode only works on PC. So sorry to all you Xbox and PS5 fans. I mean, come on, that's a major bummer, right? Not being able to play on any of the consoles is a huge miss. But hey, I'll talk more about indoor gameplay later in the video. For now, let's focus on how this go-kart actually performs outdoors. The Go-Kart Pro 2 is essentially the same size as the Pro 1, but it has a few key differences. For one, the paint job is a bit lighter and more silver than the original gunmetal gray. Another way to tell them apart is by the teal accents instead of the green ones. Or you can just look for the huge Pro 2 logo that's plastered all over the vehicle. The Pro 2 still has that super aggressive look that turns heads everywhere you go. It'll make your neighbors, kids, and even adults super jealous. One of my favorite features is the over-the-top high wing. It not only makes the go-kart look way more aggressive, but it's also a great place to attach rear LEDs to make it more visible to others. The Go-Kart Pro 2 can pull two small trailers, so you can bring your kids along on your outdoor adventures. I'm still testing these trailers and will share more details in a future review. But if you're interested in getting one now to share the fun with your kids, I've included a link below. The Go-Kart Pro 2 can go up to 26.7 miles per hour thanks to its 4,800 watt air-cooled motor, but don't get your hopes up too high. I've never been able to reach that top speed myself. The best I've done is around 20 miles per hour on flat ground in the highest speed mode. But hey, I'm a hefty 195 pounds, so that probably has something to do with it. If you're lighter, you'll likely be faster. But if you weigh more than me, you can forget about hitting 20 miles per hour. Now before you start complaining, I know it's a bummer not being able to hit the advertised speed, especially at my weight. But let me tell you, zooming around on this thing in the neighborhood while non-stop drifting is an absolute blast. It's so low to the ground that you feel like you're going a lot faster than you actually are. And that's where the fun in go-karts comes from, the perception of speed and the breakneck turns that drag out into drifts. So even though I can't hit the advertised top speed, I still have a huge blast driving this thing. The maximum acceleration of the go-kart is 1.02 Gs, producing a hefty 95 newton meter of torque. While the acceleration from 0 to 8 miles per hour is relatively mild, things truly come alive once you reach 8 miles per hour. From there, the go-kart catapults you into outer space with its impressive torque, giving you that exhilarating, sinking stomach feeling. It's an experience that never fails to put a big smile on my face. In terms of safety, the go-kart feels far more secure than other electric rides like skateboards, e-scooters, and unicycles, which have a higher risk of throwing me off. The low-profile design of the go-kart provides a sense of stability and control, making it the ideal way to enjoy an adrenaline rush without exposing yourself to excessive risk. The only real risk comes from larger vehicles like cars and trucks, as the go-kart's low height may make it difficult for them to see you. To address this, the go-kart comes with a small flag to increase your visibility. Some go-kart owners opt for LED whip lights for even better visibility, though these setups can be expensive, costing up to $300. As an alternative, I purchased a Star Wars lightsaber, which serves as a pixel saber with hundreds of LEDs lining the blade. It also comes with a battery light source, making it a unique and cost-effective way to enhance my visibility while riding at night. 
The Segway go-karts range can reach up to 15.5 miles under ideal conditions. However, heavier riders and faster speeds can quickly deplete the battery, reducing the range to just 5 to 7 miles. Unfortunately, the included 2A charger is incredibly slow by today's standards, making it impractical for quick charging. While slow chargers can extend battery life in the long run, the lack of a fast charging option is frustrating, especially when you're in a hurry. This essentially eliminates the possibility of a quick recharge at a coffee shop unless you're willing to wait around for four hours. For future models, it would be beneficial to introduce fast chargers or swappable batteries. Additionally, considering that very few people use the Segway configuration, manufacturers should consider creating a more powerful Segway dedicated solely for go-karts. The current Segway go-kart form factor may be limiting the go-kart's full potential. On a positive note, the go-kart now comes with a Y splitter for charging, eliminating the need to unplug the Segway from the frame every time you need to charge the go-kart. This quality of life improvement is greatly appreciated, especially for those with larger fingers. Let's discuss comfort. Surprisingly, the go-kart is quite comfortable for me. I sat in it for half an hour without experiencing any hot spots or back pains. However, the lack of suspension caused slight dizziness. This go-kart performs well on flat surfaces, but it can be rough on your spine if you encounter small curbs, speed bumps, or cracks in the road. The absence of a suspension system is the culprit. The first time I went over an uneven driveway, it felt like my head had popped open. If you often travel on bumpy roads, I highly recommend and adding a homemade cushion to your seat for extra dampening. Additionally, the non-pneumatic drift tires, which are not air-filled, absorb no energy and transfer all of it directly to the driver. Regarding space, the side bolsterings are relatively narrow. As a size 33 belt wearer, I felt slightly pinched. Anyone larger than me might find it uncomfortable. Fortunately, these bolsters are removable, making them adjustable for larger individuals. The official accommodation caters to people up to 6.2 feet tall, which is quite tall. However, even as a 5'9", 195 pound guy, I found my legs slightly cramped. Even when the cart was extended to its maximum length, I can only imagine how cramped a 6, 2 inches person would be. Despite the advertisement's claim of ultra-thick seat cushions, the seat is not particularly thick. Let's talk about the handling of the go-kart. Since there's no steering assistance, turning it requires a bit more upper body strength to turn. If you're like me and haven't been to the gym in a while, you might find it to be a good workout just driving around and turning the steering wheel. You can genuinely feel the wheel's resistance to the ground, and you need to fight it all the way at all times. Initially, turning the steering wheel takes more strength, but once it's turned, keeping it in the turn is much easier. However, when you let go of the steering wheel, the steering car column doesn't snap back perfectly straight, so you'll still need to make some minor adjustments to keep it going perfectly straight. The steering wheel is also a bit jittery at higher speeds, making the ride a little bit jerky. The go-kart, equipped with insanely grippy tires, can perform incredibly intense turns. Unless you've experienced a track day, adjusting to this level of lateral acceleration will be a new challenge. The G-Force acts on you sideways, creating a surprisingly brutal force on your neck during intense turns and drifts. During my first few minutes, my head flailed around uncontrollably, reminding me of the scene in Interstellar where Cooper was docking his spinning ship. He leaned his head in the opposite direction of the spin, while Anne Hathaway, who didn't do the same, passed out. Taking inspiration from Cooper, I began to synchronize my head and neck movements with the steering wheel. When turning left, I tilted my head left, and when turning right, I tilted my head right. The drift and lateral Gs are significant forces to contend with. If you don't position your head correctly, you might end up with a whiplash. It's essential to be aware of these forces and make the necessary adjustments to your body positioning to avoid injury. Despite owning tons of electric skateboards and a powerful car, I've never drifted before. The go-kart is the gateway drug to drifting. It's low, you'll never flip it over, so you can drift however much you want. The way the wheels are spinning under you while you paint the driveway with your race tires is indescribable and also satisfying. To this day, I'm still practicing drifting to make it perfect on the go-kart. It's like an art where it's easy to start but takes skills to master. 
The braking system of this go-kart is extremely jerky. Even a light tap on the brakes can cause the rider to be thrown forward and then slammed back into the seat. It feels like Segway didn't tune the braking system properly. Considering this is the fourth iteration of the same design, it's likely a problem stemming from trying to use a Segway as a go-kart. The braking curve starts off too strong but ends very mildly, dragging on for too long before coming to a complete stop. When completely stopped, the wheel locks itself, making it impossible to push the go-kart in any direction. While the brakes work well when the power is on, they become completely useless if you turn it off. Since the braking power comes from the Segway itself, turning off the go-kart disables all braking capabilities. This can be a confusing and dangerous problem, especially if you live in a hilly area as your go-kart will begin free rolling as soon as you turn off the cart. Additionally, you can't park the go-kart on a sloped surface as the hand brakes won't be able to stay locked. Instead, they act more like drift brakes. The Go-Kart Pro 2 features soft accent lights in the front, under the Segway, and in the back. However, these lights are not very bright, and they don't change color to red when braking. To enhance visibility and safety, it's highly recommended to purchase additional lighting. Consider getting shred lights and mounting them to the Go-Kart. Ideally, place white lights in the front and red lights in the back. Combined with the LED lightsaber, this setup will ensure that you're easily seen by others, even from a distance. The Go-Kart Pro 2 features paddle shifters, which initially may seem useful for shifting into different gears. However, upon familiarizing yourself with the vehicle, you'll realize that the highest race mode is the only one you'll consistently use. Unlike a gas-powered car, where lower gears provide increased torque, the Go-Kart Pro 2 does not offer this advantage. The main benefit of these paddle shifters lies in their compatibility with racing games allowing you to shift gears within the game using the physical shifters. The newly upgraded dashboard, known as the Game Kit, is the most detailed dash display to date. This dashboard provides essential information, including the speed mode, speedometer, Bluetooth status, and connection status to both the Segway and PC when playing a video game. The Go-Kart features a neat little engine speaker that mimics various engine sounds. The intensity and aggression of the sound increase as you press down on the gas pedal. There are four distinct engine sounds available, single cylinder, twin cylinder, V8, and V12. While the V8 sound is a personal favorite, the knowledge that it's coming from a speaker diminishes my overall enjoyment of the go-kart. As a result, I often prefer to keep the speaker turned off, eliminating the need for constantly charge it and enhancing the driving experience to its purest state. The Go-Kart Pro 2 has the same footprint as its predecessor, but it still takes up a significant amount of space in a garage. It's essential to consider storage before purchasing the Go-Kart. There is a vertical stand that I highly recommend. This stand reduces more than half of the Go-Kart's footprint while still allowing it to charge. The wheels on the stand are a fantastic feature as they allow you to move the Go-Kart vertically and lock it down once it's in a safe place. However, it's important to note that the stand is not the most stable. I wouldn't recommend letting young children near it as it could fall down with the slightest touch. One complaint I have about the Go-Kart Pro 2 is the limited storage space. As a racing vehicle, this is understandable. However, I sometimes wish there was a designated place to store my phone, GoPro, or DSLR camera. Backpacks are not ideal, as the seating position leaves no room for a backpack. 
In a separate video, I cover the game mode setup and review in detail. Surprisingly, the gamepad that comes with the Segway unit does not connect automatically. To manually establish a connection, press and hold the left trigger, right trigger, down button, and A button simultaneously for a few seconds. However, this gamepad is not compatible with consoles like Xbox or PS5. You can only play games on PC. While it works with all the racing games I have on Steam and the EA launcher, be sure to have a mouse and keyboard nearby. Some games require a mouse to navigate the menus since the game kit lacks thumbsticks. In the recent past, Costco offered an incredible sale on Segway Go-Kart Pro 2, pricing them as low as $700 below the manufacturer's suggested retail price, MSRP. Best Buy also frequently runs sales on these carts. Given the availability of frequent sales, paying the full MSRP would mean overpaying for the product. A fair price for a new Segway Go-Kart Pro 2 should be around $1,800, while an exceptional deal would be finding it at $1,500. Consequently, when buying a used Pro or Pro 2, a price range of $1,200 to $1,300 would be a good deal. The Go-Kart Pro 2 weighs around 105 pounds, but is conveniently movable due to its unique design. You can separate the Segway from the Go-Kart, with each component weighing approximately 50 pounds. This feature makes it much easier to carry around, particularly if you reside in an apartment. The Go-Kart Pro 2 delivers an exhilarating drifting experience thanks to its grippy tires and responsive handling, making it an exceptional choice for both beginners and experienced drifters. While the limited storage space, somewhat jerky braking system, and lack of authentic engine sound may be minor inconveniences, they don't detract from the overall enjoyment of the kart. The Go-Kart Pro 2 offers an immersive and enjoyable drifting experience, making it a worthwhile investment for those seeking a thrilling addition to their recreational activities, especially with their kids. Is it a worthy upgrade from previous models? Would you consider purchasing one? Share your thoughts and opinions below. Don't forget to subscribe for more exciting content related to personal electric vehicles, or check out my review on the Go-Kart Pro 2's game mode.